The Font, Marcus Fontampelli. Yes, we are lucky enough to have the man that goes by the Bont on the rush hour. And as we can see there, Bont, where do we find you, buddy? <laughs> you know, lads, first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm actually up in, in Exmouth at the minute, which is a you know two-hour plane ride out of Perth, but a sort of 12, 12 hour drive up, up north. So just enjoying some time off, mate. Have you been back to Melbourne at all post uh, the grand final and what went down over there? No, I haven't haven't been back um, just yet. I've been planning a, a trip um, around WA for for a couple of years and tried to get across last year but couldn't out of the Gold Coast. So finishing up here probably made pretty good sense to spend a bit of time here and check out some of the good spots. Nice spot up there. I went up there last year with Dougie Hawkins, the Bont, and uh, there's a supermarket there, days, and not a lot. A supermarket. Hot. That was the highlight. Well, a shopping <laughs> shopping centre. Okay. Sorry. Yes. But there is a brewery there that we went out the back and had a couple of frothies there and put on one of the great shows there. I think 14 people turned up. But um, <laughs> are you you're travelling around, which is fantastic. You went up to the Tiwi Islands. Uh, everyone says how good that is, Bont. Yeah, it was a pretty special experience. I'd you know been to Darwin when I was a kid, and then um, went last year probably for the first time since, and then did some good stuff. And and this year again, we headed across the Tiwi to visit some of the communities and then visit some of the schools. It's just a great experience. The rawness and the, the love for the game yeah. over there is is so real and so passionate. It does. It's quite refreshing heading over and then just visiting and chatting to a few of the locals. So we had a, we had an awesome time over on the islands. Yeah, they love their footy. They also love naming some of their kids after footballers. How many bonts run around? Ooh. Yeah, there was a couple. There was one <laughs> fellow who who run for about oh, 100 metres, I think, to give us a big hug and tell me that he was he was bont and pally also. So we had that we had that in common. But um, that that was great. Yeah. Their love for the game is so pure. Um, and the people there just appreciate it, I think, seeing a few footballers over willing to say day. Absolutely fantastic work you're doing up there. No doubt you took the book that you've got there, <laughs> Little Bont and the Big Secret, signing a few autographed copies for the good people up there. Just a couple, just a couple, mate. It's been a, it's been an awesome project to, to be a part of, to, to bring out a, a kid's book. And I've, I've been lucky to, to partner with a, a firm press and Fiona Harris, who's Help write it with me, and then the illustrations by Megan Megan Higgins have just been awesome and really brought the story to life. So yeah, it's a pretty nice feeling. So Daisy, you're a kids book <laughs> author also. What did you think of this? I liked it, Bill. Yeah. It was fantastic. And I'll tell you what I did like, Bond. The way you uh, broke it to your mum. Obviously, the story. There's family ties throughout yeah. the whole book. The tribute to your nana in the book at the start, fantastic, and the storyline that goes with it. But that was a, a great moment, obviously, FaceTiming it and seeing her reaction. You must have loved that. That must have been one of the most enjoyable parts. It was. It was a, it was a bit challenging. I was in sort of Tassie at the time. It was just before or just after I think we played our first final and we were stuck there for a couple of days. And I'm, you know, technologically okay, but it was a tough, it's difficult trying to get everything connected and then the sound and audio going um, and also the visual. But it was a really cool part to, to being able to do the book I kept it a secret from mum for, for most of the time until the, the book was announced that it was launching um, and she was wrapped with it she was so pumped um, to, to sort of see it up close in a, in a sense um, and it, yeah you're right it was a really special feeling to be able to reveal it to her and show people how she reacted just a, a start of it, Bill. Veggie mite sandwiches, sponge cakes, and too many scotch fingers. If that doesn't just encapsulate oh. a childhood of the grandparents, I don't know what does. Exactly. <laughs> a Bont and Pelly is Italian, yeah? Yep, yep. Yeah. So she and Nora. This, this was mum. Nah, this was mum's side. So oh, mum's right. background and, and heritage is, I guess she's got an Irish heritage but um yeah. nana was born here but my pot was from ireland yeah. um so yeah. that was the yeah the irish side the irish australian side oh the scotch finger biscuits they were unbelievable fantastic. dip them in that coffee and in then the they, milk they bust yeah. off and then nana would crack the sads all and afternoon they make pancakes my nanny used to make the best pancakes yeah same yeah yeah nana was exactly the same <laughs> spot on so that's the big secret of course so um that's good any bookstores you've seen any up there in exmouth uh, I don't think they've made the trip up just yet, but I'm sure there'll be a, a box on the way um, for, for the people here to enjoy and hopefully indulge in. But um, all good bookstores, I think you'll be able to find a copy. Um, so, yeah, pretty exciting yeah, project to have done. It is fantastic. Of course, this is just a small way into life after football and yeah. different things you can do outside of footy. We came across one when we were prepping for this interview. Were you aware back when of the uh, Chris Hemsworth oh, link yes. to you and his love for you in the uh, presentation he did for selling the game in the US? 
I, I, I is this the video that yeah, he did? Yeah. Um, for the, yeah, I did. I did catch a little bit or catch wind of that. It's pretty impressive. Um, to see, you know, the, the strong ties that Chris has with our, with our football club and particularly myself. Um, so you do appreciate when fans like to, you know, indulge and, and include themselves in the story and the journey. I'd like to see that it was called and we've got it here. Have a listen, Bon. Chris. Chris. We can't wait to hear you pitch, Chris. Now you just take your time whenever you're Bulldogs ready. Bulldogs hadn't won a flag in 62 years and the competition was tough. Down and out, missing their fearless leader, those brave underdogs found victory. Chris. But now it's 2017, new season, new battle. What are you talking about? Will the doggies go on to find glory? Or will another team rise up and steal their crown? Nobody knows. But the Bulldogs have a secret weapon. The Bond. The Bond? The Bond? <laughs> the bond? <laughs> How good's that? Have you ever met him? Uh, I haven't. I, I know he, he was he was in the rooms um, off the back of the the sixteen grand final when we won, but there was a lot going on. Um, he was swarmed by probably more people than, than we were. Even after, yeah, like you said, breaking a drought, a sixty four odd or sixty two year premiership drought. So, um, but we've, we've had a text here and there. He, he loves, I think, tuning in and watching the game. So it's it's nice to know he's obviously still got strong connections back with our football club. Do you like the name the Bont? Because you're stuck with it regardless. But do you actually like being called the Bont? Because that's all we in the industry refer to you yeah. as. Yeah, you don't really get a choice sometimes of the nicknames that, that um, follow you around. But I, I I, don't mind it. I think there's there's much worse you probably could have been sort of tagged with or, or called. So I was definitely happy to roll with something sort of simple. And I think people just struggled a bit with my last name early on. So it made it a lot easier to just abbreviate to the, the four letters. Spot on. Hey, now the wash up of the grand final, of course. Uh, Melbourne were going to win by 10 goals. Then uh, the doggies come back. Not and... just the doggies, our man, Bill. Oh, no, he started. Just put him on the shoulder and said, come with he, me, he, boys. He had to go forward and say, I'll kick the goal here. You blokes aren't doing anything. And then <laughs> looked like the doggies were going to win. And then I don't know what happened, but the D's exploded. But the wash up there, mate, what's happened there? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously, you know, losing any grand final is always going to be disappointing, but especially when you consider, you know, we had a pretty strong, you know, grip on, on the on the game yeah. sort of throughout that third quarter, and it just it changed so quickly. They found a, an energy and, a, and, a, and an appetite to play at a level that we probably couldn't match in an instant almost, um, and it just felt like the game became really on, you know, out of our out of our control so quickly. So. Unfortunately, we really couldn't find our way back into arresting some of the momentum, and um, they played a super, a super game, a super season. Um, and you really just have to let it go. Is probably my mentality. It's hard to. It's, it's a, an emotional attachment you have to a, such a big game and a build up. But the best thing is probably to let it go and just try again next year. And I feel like we're pretty well set up to hopefully have a good challenge over the next couple of years. No doubt they will be driving you and the rest of the boys over the preseason. That little bit extra motivation, the fire in the belly. Yeah, I think everyone will probably, you know, treat it differently. Some will probably completely disregard it and look to the to the future as, as how optimistic it could be. But I think definitely for some, it might it might sting for a little while. And you can use that definitely, like you said, as a, as a bit of motivation when the when things get tough in, in pre-season, as, as you blokes would know, as there's moments throughout that you, you wonder about whether it's all too hard and that might just give that extra bit of incentive to keep going. What was the crowd, the ground... Perth, what was it all like? Because everyone's raved about it. Yeah, mate, it was pretty epic. They put on a, a really good show. Um, you know, obviously we didn't probably experience the entertainment and the build up being in the rooms and then trying to go through your normal prep. But from a from a sound perspective, and, and obviously that stadium being as, as new as it is, is so well equipped to host such good events and especially that sort of game. So um, you know, luckily I've played in another one, so I've got something to compare it to, but it was pretty close in terms of what it was able to provide from an atmosphere perspective. And Easton Wood came out a bit of a shock to yeah. most of us that he's hung up the boots. Mm. How did he break that to you guys? Obviously, you're all around the world and, well, not the world, but Australia at the minute in different parts. How did that go down? Yeah, we spoke uh, a few weeks beforehand and he let me know that, um, you know, this was the right time for him and his reasons for, for why he felt like it was time for him to, to sort of hang him up. And he's been such a, a strong influence for me and the football club for a couple of years. Obviously, he captained the, the 2016 mm. Premiership in, in Bob's absence and, and continued to drive the, the you know positive culture that we wanted at the football club. So he's had a, an incredible career, one with you know multiple challenges and then found his way out of it and became, you know, probably one of the best, especially for a couple of years there, one of the best intercepting sort of defenders in, in the league. So 
Um, you know, it's disappointing. We'll miss him. Um, but he's got two young kids now that I'm sure he can't wait to spend more time with. Spot on. He's been a, a very good uh, player for you and a captain, of course. Hey, now, what's on the Savo up there at Exmouth? I think you've got a couple of mates up there. Norton, you've got Josh Dunkley. If you've got Josh Dunkley, you've probably got Adam Trelaw. Surely they're in rooming together. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think Josh is over in Noosa at the minute. He's oh. he's chilling out. I think Adam might be back home. He had to have some um, a little clean up or two. But who, who's he? Aaron Norton and Jamara, Hugo Hagen, the young fella, yep. and a couple of um, Aaron Norton's mates who are all WA WA locals. I think Mud Crabbing's on the cards, which I'm not Ooh. sure. I'll be I'll be sticking <laughs> my hands in too many holes. Um, yes. But I might it might be a bit of might be a bit of watching for me, and I'll just I'll just get ready when the food's ready to be cooked yeah. and eaten. Uh, seems like the smart play there, mate. Well, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the off-season rest up. We can't wait to see you back in action next season. The, the book, book, of course, yep. is Little Bont and the Big Secret. It is available now from all bookstores and online. Marcus Bont and Pally, you are a superstar. Thank you, gents. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Bont. It's the Rush Hour. Billy and Daisy on Triple M.